Hey man, can you do a video about a tier list of weapons and tools and maybe even armor? Man, I wish you would do a guide about all the weapons because I'm still confused about what most of them do. Well, my friends, your wish has been granted. Today will be about as straightforward as it could possibly be as we won't look to abuse bosses for personal gain, we won't create some elaborate farm to do all the murdering for us, and we won't even talk about character-specific damage benefits. It's just us... Wilson, and a crap ton of weapons to bash heads in with, so let's get to it. Keep in mind that this isn't a tiered list, but we will be naturally progressing through the various weapons and their categories. And we will begin with basic melee combat, and what better to get us rolling than the pointy stick itself, the spear. A science machine is needed, along with a single flint, rope, and two twigs. And the spear itself deals 34 damage per poke and can be used 150 times before its end. Don't expect it to win many prizes when up against many of the other weapons we will be discussing today. But again, you always remember your first. That is, of course, until the next hottest thing arrives on the scene. And exclusively craftable by Wickford alone, the Battle Spears are what we're going to be talking about. They require more twigs, flint, and even gold. The durability jumps to 200 uses, while the damage is an upgraded 42.5 as compared to a 34 damage normal spear. And if there's a wig on the team, have her do you a solid and hand one over for a while, because these really are going to help in the early game. But the next available upgrade for players in general is likely the Tentacle Spike, a weapon that isn't craftable but rather is dropped by the Swamp Dwelling Hentai. Tentacles, even the big tentacles down under, have a 50% chance to drop the spike, and if you do obtain one, you'll have use of a weapon boasting 100 uses at 51 damage a pop. A very, very good alternative to early game spears, and they are easily renewable. And here's a quick bit. If a big tentacle does drop one, none of the others will be able to drop one for an entire day. So don't go trying to farm spikes down here. It is inevitable. The Hambat, probably the go-to for most players out there, is made via pig butts, twigs, and even some actual foodies. A quick tip. Feed any pig four monster meat to transform them into a were pig and then proceed to absolutely murder it for nearly all the loot needed for a single meaty bat. Handbats have unlimited use, but the weapon itself does spoil over time at a rate of 0.37 per minute, and as a result, the weapon gets weaker as time draws on. But when it is fresh, it deals 59.5 damage, and that paired with its durability makes the weapon incredibly ideal for most every fight in the entire game. Excluding, of course, the one with the King of the Frogs, and that's because Toadstool spoils food faster, and since a handbat is technically a food, well... You know what's gonna happen. But make note, use an icebox or an equivalent to prolong the handbat's life cycle. So meat smacking ho! But arguably the strongest melee weapon in the game? The Glass Cutter. New to the Return of Them update, you'll need to venture to the lunar biome, construct a new celestial altar, and then smash together a single board and six total moon shards for a truly cutting edge weapon. At 68 damage and 75 uses, you may question the validity of this weapon when compared to its dark sword equivalent, but we must keep in mind the glass cutter's unique mechanic, its durability versus shadow creatures. The damage may remain the same, but it jumps from 75 uses to a whopping 150 uses when being slashed through nightmares. And the truly noteworthy side of it all is that the unique trait extends to the ancient fuel weaver itself. There are no downsides, outputs the same damage as a flippin' dark sword, and has increased durability against the biggest bat of them all. Absolutely glass-tastic. All the basics out of the way, let's get a little fancy with it, yes? And we will with the Morning Star. Another weapon with a unique perk that truly separates it from the rest of the pack. The Niter and the Electrical Doodad should come with little hassle, but remember you must head to the Oasis Desert to drag down the herd of Vault Goats for their horns. The Pummel Stick is special in many ways, and the first thing you'll notice is the fact that it doesn't technically have durability in the same sense as other weapons, but 
but rather loses it when it's just equipped. And equipping it also comes with the added bonus of a light source, and it's a pretty decent one to be honest. But since it has an electrical modifier, it deals 43.35 damage at its base. But that same modifier allows the Morningstar to deal an incredible 72.25 damage to any mob that happens to be wet. So make note that all tentacles, every merm, and even the living, breathing hentai of the caves are always wet. So the Morningstar is ideal for handling these suckers. Plus, it's my weapon of choice for spring. But how about range combat? Well, there isn't much to celebrate as range combat itself is rather lackluster at the moment, but that doesn't mean that ranged weapons don't have their uses. The boomerang is up first, and you'll need an alchemy along with a board, silk, and charcoal in order to become one with the land down under. It can be whipped about 10 times at 27.2 damage a bonk, making it efficient when hunting rabbits and even birds, as each will die in a single hit. But make sure you're catching it upon its return by holding spacebar or else you yourself will be bonked in the noggin and the boomerang will lose two times the durability as it would otherwise. And I really wouldn't recommend one for actual combat, but they can be used to draw aggro from goats or even koala fins while on your hunts or even allow you to keep the distance from the hentai nightmares if you truly are afraid of them. Blow dart variants are next, and I guess we'll just start with the simplest one, the blow dart. Head into the swamp once more for reeds, murder some puppies for their teeth, and you'll have to ground a bluebird in winter for its azure feather. And believe it or not, the blow dart is mighty useful at its 100 damage per spitball, and the frequency of attacks is really tough to handle for many mobs in the game. I'd use it primarily against other rangers like Mac Tusks and even the bishops and you can also draw the aggro from koalas once again or heck just riddle it with holes because it's gonna die quickly at a hundred a pop. Toss in a crimson feather and a charcoal instead to amass fire darts, a blow dart variant that doesn't actually deal contact damage but instead deals all of its damage through fire up to 120 damage worth too. It's alright I guess, but on fire enemies also means on fire everything, so I guess be careful. Plus, in order to maximize damage, you have to wait until the target is not on fire before you spit fire at them again. Call me Mr. Sandman. Sleep darts give bee stingers a purpose, but don't forget to nab some crows for their jet feathers in order to crack some as well. And sleep darts put mobs to sleep. Duh. But every mob has varying resistances to the sleepiness. Some take in but one dart, while others can take up to a total of five. And if you hit a sleeping mob, they'll immediately wake up, so you don't really get too much return out of the deal, but I guess it will have some uses for some out there. The most intriguing out of them all, the electric dart. Remember that you'll need to be outside of a grasslands biome with a friendly scarecrow built in order to summon canaries for their saffron feathers. But once created, the electrical darts deal 90 damage each, but can jump to it an electrifying 150 per, if your target is wet that is. That alone is amazing, but keep in mind that electrical darts and the morning star as well can also charge volt goats, and that will eventually lead to electric milk. Gosh darn it man, the freaking weather pain again. You know what, I'm only gonna tell you to get down feathers from Moose Goose and the horn from both goats and you can just recall all the rest cause I'm sick of talking and blowing this thing around. Cause it's explosives time and there ain't no time for nothing else. Gunpowder is incredibly powerful and insanely easy to obtain, even with rotten eggs being an essential ingredient. Just feed a bird within a birdcage some meat and even monster meat to amass some eggs. Then, place them in the chest for a time and they'll eventually turn into rotten eggs. And then you've got all you need to blow up the world. Seriously, gunpowder does 200 damage and yes, it does stack. So grab a pile of it and a pan flute and head out to absolutely obliterate Clopsy or just about anything else really. Just don't stand too close and be mindful of burning the potential loot if you happen to use too much of it. 
But the alternative? Slurtle Slime. It's been a long while since we've seen our Slurtle and Snurtle friends, but if we want pseudo gunpowder without any crafting needed, then we must find them. They'll eat any mineral apart from marble, and doing so will result in them producing slime for our pleasure. And the better the mineral, the more slime, by the by. It works the same as gunpowder, but only deals 50 damage per, so you will need far more to topple any of the big baddies you look to. But hey, it's technically free, so no complaining there. Last but not least, well, maybe least, but it's up to you to decide that. Traps and mines. Capture bees via the bug net to create the bee mine, a gimmicky weapon-esque item that unleashes a swarm of bees that will attack your attacker. Useful? Yeah, not so much, but hey, it sure is fun, and I honestly would use them more if you were able to reuse them. Next? Teeth traps. We'll have a guide dedicated to these soon, but know that creating your own teeth trap feels is a wonderful, murder-friendly idea as they'll help against ever-strengthening hound waves, big bads if you really need them, and anything else you'd like to dwindle down in health. Holy crap, this is going on forever, but we can't leave magic weapons out of the equation, and to kick us off, we have the coveted Dark Sword. Farm nightmares for fuel and hope for tree guardians for the living logs, and then you'll have access to a weapon that deals 68 damage per use out of its total of 100. The Dark Sword is easily one of the best around, but Wheeler One drops sanity by 20 per minute, so be careful while swinging about, as you may go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs during a fight. And having to deal with nightmares during an additional fight is something that no one wants to do. The Fire Staff, a weapon that uses another weapon to create a weapon. But honestly though, you may be better off just keeping the spear as the Fire Staff costs sanity to use, has limited uses in general, and relies solely on measly fire damage that only deals 48 to 56 in total. Yes, not per use, for all the uses. And that's just simply not worth it. The Ice Staff, however, could maybe find use among your ever-growing arsenal. Sure, it uses sanity similar to its hotter cousin, but the Staff actually freezes enemies for strategical use over just having to sit around and watch the world burn. Once again, like the Sleep Dart, various mobs have resistances to being frozen, with most smaller mobs needing but 1 to 2 blasts, the big boys needing 4 to 8 blasts to turn them into popsicles. And attacking frozen enemies does thaw them instantly, but the Ice Staff could give a slight edge to damage output, while also allowing the player to flee if need be, because thawed out enemies actually de-aggro on the player. Gimmick time! The Bat-Bat requires 5 Bat Wings, so cap a cave entrance or enter their domain to get you some, and then smash some together to create a weapon that smashes for 42.5 damage each while boasting 75 uses in total. Furthermore, the Bat-Bat leeches 6.8 health from hostiles if your health is low, but I do not recommend using one often and casually, because once your health does reach max, then you're just using a kind of poor weapon. Use it on much smaller mobs when and if you need health, and even bash Chester's hand in if you're desperate. And it's not like anyone cares about Chester anyway. But to wrap us all up, the Thule Side Club. You'll need to venture to and through the ruins in order to not only reach the ancient pseudo sign station, but also obtain enough Thule Side fragments to craft the majestic weapon. It deals 59.5 damage, the equivalent of a hand bat, and has 150 total uses at your disposal. The ancient club also increases your movement speed by 10% when held, making kiting easier, and there is also a 20% chance of it spawning shadowy hentai. Shadow tentacles last for 9 seconds and will actually smack anything in range of them, dealing 34 damage each. So even though the club and handbat match an initial damage output, the additional tentacles can really rack up the damage, thus making the full side club a step above your swing and meat, but also one of the best weapons in the entire game. Oh, and pair it with the Bee Queen Crown that negate any of the sanity loss from the shadowy hentai too. Hold up, Beardo forgot one, folks. The Tail O3 Cats. Slaughter some cat coons for a 33% chance to get a cattail, and whip three of them together to create a literal whip. It's a ranged weapon that can potentially do 27.2 damage per every one of its 175 uses, but the whip has a unique perk that allows the player to de-aggro mobs. It comes with a loud snap, so keep your ears open. 25% of the time it will happen with normal 
animals. It will happen 20% of the time for monsters, and even 5% of the time for bosses. Is it gimmicky? Heck yes it is. Is it kinky? Well, to each their own there. But there you have it everyone, an extensive guide on all things weaponry and don't starve together. There's a lot to choose from and plenty to balance, but few stand above all the rest. I hope you enjoy murdering it all to find out which ones yourself. But thanks for watching everyone, well wishes to all out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!